Hello everybody. Today we're going to discuss about whiting filters. A whiting filter is used to emphasize or suppress some aspects of a phenomenon compared to others for measurement or other purposes. So what do whiting filters even filter out? They filter out certain frequencies and decibel level and that totally depends on the type of filter. There are different types of whiting filters. Now what are the purposes of these filters? The purpose is to match the human ear's frequency response at different sound intensities. Now clearly, human ear do not have a flat frequency response. They have a non-linear frequency response. Let's understand the frequency response of a human before diving into the filters topic. All right, now that we have learned that human ear is a non-linear frequency response, so what is the consequence of a non-linear frequency response? The consequence is that not all frequencies of equal loudness sound equally loud. What it means is, you know, if all the frequencies from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz are being played at the same amount of amplitude or same loudness, they're all not going to sound equally loud. You know, some of them may sound too loud for the human ear, some of them might sound too feeble, and that's the result of a nonlinear frequency response. Certain sounds sound more bright, certain sounds dull. That is because human ears are most sensitive in the range of 2000 to 5000 hertz. That is the range where we pick up sounds easily. You know, that is the range where we can even hear the most feeble sounds. But outside of the range, it might be a little difficult. Now, the hearing sensitivity also drops down toward the lower and the higher. So we're not able to hear all the lowest bass or the highest treble. This is the equal loudness contour. This is a representation, a graphical representation of how the human ear perceives sound of different frequencies to be equally loud. The unit of loudness is phone spelled as P-H-O-N, and these are also referred to as fletcher munson curves. You know, these are the results of large amount of psychoacoustic experiments performed on subjects, where the subjects are played each individual frequency from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, and asked to rate, you know, how loud it is with respect to the, uh, the other. And then, you know, a large number of experiments are performed, and then they arrive at these curves. It's a topic in itself in psychoacoustics, but the key thing to take away from here is that in the bandwidth of 2000 to 5000 hertz, we do observe that the curve drops down, whereas in every other case, it just shoots up, which proves that human hearer responds to frequencies heavily in the 2000 to 5000 range and little poor in the treble and very poor toward the bass. All right, we did see the equal loudness contour and the nonlinear frequency response of a human hearer. Now, there are certain limitations of a human hearer. Definitely, we are not able to hear the bass, even though it's present. So, in order to overcome those limitations, you know, these filters were developed. They filter out certain frequencies to show how sound is as is, as a human would perceive. And there are different types. You know, there, are, there is A weighting filter, B weighting filter, C, D, G, and Z. Now, some of them are in use, some of them are obsolete, but let's take a look at them anyway. The A weighting filter filters out significantly more bass frequencies compared to other frequencies and is designed to approximate the ear at around the 40 phone level. Now the 40 phone level is the psychoacoustic loudness level as we saw in the equal loudness contour curves. A filters are very useful for eliminating inaudible low frequencies. So what the A filter does is it filters out the bass region in the spectrum. So it correlates with what a human ear hears as opposed to what sound is present. For example, when you capture sound with a microphone, the microphone, assuming it has a flat frequency response, is going to capture all the sounds, including the bass, equally. But a human would not hear the bass because, you know, a human has a poor frequency response in the bass region. And that is where the A filter comes into picture. The A filter does the bass filtering so as to give a spectrum that is, you know, correlating with what a human would perceive. And it's very widely used 90% of the times expressed in DBA. The B weighting filter filters out medium loud sound levels compared to the A weighting filter. It is also referred to as the intermediate filter since it approximates human ears for medium loud sounds. It was used by the motor industry but now it's obsolete. So when it was used it was expressed in dBB. The C weighting filter differs from both A and B in the fact that they filter less of the lower and higher frequencies. C filters approximate the human ear at very high sound levels. Now, one thing to note is that very high sound levels, you know, there is no disparity between the lower and the higher frequencies. All the frequencies, you know, almost sound equally loud at very high sound levels. So unlike the A filter, C filter follows the 100 phone psychoacoustic loudness curve. 
It is used not many times, but it is in use in sound measurement of especially loud and noisy environments, and it is expressed in DBC. The D weighting filter was developed for measuring aircraft noise, especially non bypass military engines. It is no longer in use, it is expressed in DBD. Alright, here are the weighting filters A, B, C, and D. So, as we can observe, the A filter, you know, is filtering out significantly the base region starting from 200 all the way to 10 hertz, but it keeps up all the other mids and high levels. The B filter is filtering a little less base compared to A, but the C filter is significantly not filtering out the base or the treble regions. And the D filter, it has a bump near the high frequency regions. Now let's talk about G weighting filter. G weighting filter was specifically designed for infrasound. G weighting is an attempt to enable the measurement of infrasound in the presence of a high frequency sound. Now let's clarify two terms. Infrasound. Infrasound is any frequency below 20 hertz, below the human hearing range. And in this context, high frequency sound means anything about 20 hertz. So between 1 hertz and 20 hertz, the G weighting curve approximates a straight line with a slope of 12 dB per octave. We'll look at a graph in a second. Above 20 hertz is where, you know, we classify this as high frequency sound. The curve rapidly falls off. And the G weighting filter, the curve has a 0 dB gain at 10 hertz frequency. Now, it's not common for G weighting filters to be used, but when they are used, the sound level is expressed in dBG. A G weighted level of 95 to 100 dBG is close to the perception level, whereas a G weighted level below 85 to 90 are not normally significant for human perception. All right, this is an approximate plot of a G weighted filter. So we can observe the curve as it rises from 1 hertz and goes up to 20. It has a slope of 12 dB per octave, and it has a zero dB gain around 10 hertz. And then after 20 hertz, it drops down. So this plot, the frequency is in the x-axis, gain is in the y-axis, and the x-axis is in a logarithmic scale and not a linear scale. What is a Z-weighting filter? The Z-weighting filter is a filter which has a flat frequency response from 10 hertz to 20 kilohertz with a deviation of 1.5 dB. So, you know, so it, it doesn't do any filtering at all. It filters zero noise, hence it's given the name Z filter, where Z stands for zero. So this response replaces the older linear or unweighted response, because those did not define the frequency range over which the meter would be linear. It is used in octave band analysis for determining environmental noise. It is expressed in dBZ. Here's a Z weighting filter. It's a straight line from 10 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So it's going to capture the noise as is and it'll not apply any filtering to that noise. All right. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, hit the comments. I'll be sure to respond. All right. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.